The cheapest Porsche 718 Cayman S in the whole entire country is back and today it's about to undergo one of the biggest transformations. Let's get this thing started up and outside and then we can go through the next lot of repairs to get this thing back on the road. Most of you would know by now that I was mad enough to buy the cheapest 718 Cayman S in the whole entire country. It costed me £18,500. In the last video, I fitted a rear quarter, an A pillar and a roof. And I'm over the moon because now she drives! <laughs> But I think that might be the least of my worries because we've still got a lot more to do. And although we got a lot of work done in the last video, I was a little lazy and I missed out a few vital parts that I need to make sure I do today. But who can blame me? I am no mechanic and I don't claim to be, but that's why this repair has been one of the hardest I've ever had to do. If I want my repair to last, then we've got to do all the little things like this. Here you can see where the new rear quarter meets the sill and on all the OEM parts, there's like a bit of sealer which runs around where each panel meets a new panel, if that makes sense. This is to stop any water or anything else getting in between the gaps of the panels, then causing it to corrode or rust away. So now it's up to me to try and get this as neat as possible. <laughs> Off to a bit of a bad start, but I'm sure we can redeem it. There was a lot of other things that we did to prevent rust, like using weld through primer before welding the new panels to the car. And probably one of the most vital places where it gets the most dirt and wet is under the wheel arch. So I'm going to make sure I pay special attention to that area. Well, Matt, you've successfully made that look rubbish. How rude of you. But <laughs> Actually, you're kind of right. It does look a bit of a mess at the minute, but... I'm sure when this is all painted up, it won't look too bad. All of this sealant is going to be covered up by a side skirt and regardless of whether it looks rubbish or not, it's doing its job and the part that you are probably going to see is this part here and I don't think it looks too far off the OEM side. But now I really am in a predicament because I want to put this car back together but the more I put it back together, the more work the body shop's going to have to do stripping it apart again to paint it all. The body shop are going to be doing things like neating up the join there, neating up the join here, doing the bead of Sikaflex down the roof and making it look nice and OEM, sorting out all the dents on the driver's side like here, here and up here as well. And last but not least, they're going to be painting it and this car's going to be painted a completely different colour. So they need everything really as stripped apart as possible and that's the exact opposite to what i'm going to be doing so i'm sorry body shop but the reason i'm doing this is because i'm still unsure whether i've got all the parts for this car and also i'm going to be fitting a lot of aftermarket parts so it's nice to test whether they fit first before they go into paint and we have to readjust them afterwards and if there are parts missing the perfect time for me to order them will be when the car is at the body shop that way, when it comes out, I'll have the parts ready to fit. At least that's my train of thought. Now, we are going to be reusing the rear bumper. Only problem with this, there's some pretty severe holes in it from what we think was a forklift. I don't really know anything about bodywork, as you're about to find out. But I'm more than happy to give things a go. So I'm going to heat the bumper up, then use some plastic weld on the back of it to hold it together. And after the plastic weld's on, just to give it a bit more strength for the back, I'm going to add some fiberglass. And once the fiberglass is dry, I'm going to be using a special filler which is made for plastic bumpers over the top. And whilst we wait for the filler to set, I can move back onto the car and start installing a load of trims and plastic pieces. Next thing to go on is the front wing. Again, I'm not going to be replacing this because there's only a few small dents in it which I think the body shop should be able to sort out before paint. And with the front wing on, I can put on the new side skirt and we'll get to all the prices later in the video. But now it's starting to look like more of a car. With this special bumper filler dry, I can then start sanding it down to try and get it nice and smooth. And once I've done that, I can then start to add normal body filler because I feel this was a lot easier to shape and get right before paint. And whilst I wait for that to dry, I can start to add more plastic pieces which hold the rear bumper in place. And then I'm back at it with the sandpaper on the rear bumper. And finally, a bit of primer to find the high and low spots of the filler. Well, 
Well, it's definitely not as easy as it looks. But it's definitely better than what it was. This side, we have no hole on there now. It's primed up. The body shop could definitely touch it up and make it look a lot better than what I have. This side was the worst side. And the thing you may notice is that it was really hard to keep the body line consistent throughout the whole of the rear bumper. And it does go off a bit there. When the diffuser's on, maybe it'll distract a bit from it. But it definitely needs touching up from the body shop. At least I gave it a go myself and I've learned quite a lot. Now this rear bumper's about to go on. The Porsche is slowly going to start to come together. But I'd be lying if I said that this was an easy rebuild. But let me show you what was an easy build. This website I built using Squarespace who have sponsored today's video. Now Squarespace do everything from websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics. It really is the all-in-one platform to build and run <laughs> your business now repairing the bumper may be hard but the hardest thing about squarespace is choosing from the many templates that they have to start from and once you've chosen your template that best suits your style you can then go in and edit it you can drag and drop your own photos in there your own logos and edit whatever text or buttons you like another cool thing i like is that you can switch between desktop view and mobile view so you can make any adjustments there so when you need a website go to squarespace.com or just click the link in the description box below and when you're ready to launch use code matt armstrong and that's going to get you 10 percent off your first website or domain name she's starting to look good now look at that we are well and truly moving in the right direction now in fact it's putting the other side to shame so next up is the spoiler a window a door handle, hey, and a wing mirror. And that is pretty much it for one side and it's looking so much better. There are little trims and seals missing around the door, but we do have them. I'm not gonna put them on just because yes, this is going to paint. But as for the driver's side, well, that's a different story completely, but we have answers. Here is a driver's side wing and there's no saving this one. It is completely crumpled. But the thing is with Porsches, the wing is also the headlight holder and the place where you fill the fuel up as well. Now I was so close to buying a second hand wing and I held off buying one from the dealer because I just thought it was gonna be way too expensive. But here I am, yes again, sitting next to a body panel which I bought from the main dealer and you won't believe the price. 383 pound but check this the cheapest second hand wing on ebay was 399 pound and 95p plus postage and it had damage so it was a no-brainer to buy one from the main dealer so all i've got to do is switch off all the stuff off the old wing onto the new wing including the petrol filler cap and a few trims and clips And the wing wouldn't be complete without the next part, the headlight. And we all know how headlights go on this channel. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But this is the state of the old one. So it definitely needed replacing. This time I've managed to match up the part numbers with the new one. So I can't see any reason why they wouldn't work because they're exactly the same part number. The only thing I've got to transfer is the Xenon on the back, the bulb and a few little bits on the inside of the old headlight. And I'm not gonna fit it into the wing just yet. I do wanna see whether it works first. These headlights have no reason not to work. Come on. Headlights, please, <laughs> they're working, come on, that's working, let me check the indicators, uh, oh, the indicators are in the bumper, okay, we're good, <laughs> so they're all clear from the headlights, we can now begin to assemble the wing and put the headlight into it with peace of mind. And whilst I'm on the driver's side, I might as well finish it off with the brand new second hand side skirt. Settle down. 
bell, quiet please. Thank you. So what you can see on screen now is a Porsche Cayman S front end. This would be the most sensible and cheap option. But wait, hold it, hold it. What you can see on screen now is a Porsche Cayman GT4 front end, which is way cooler. Is that so? It is, it just looks a lot better. So let me guess, which one did you go for? Of course, I went for the GT4 front bumper. And it, this is sort of made out of a fiberglass plastic material. It's quite flimsy, but it's definitely gonna transform the Cayman S. It's got loads of carbon all with it, so it's gonna take a fair bit of building up. I'm gonna build the bumper up, and this is gonna look so good. Of course, this wasn't needed to repair the car, but me being me, I like to upgrade things as well as replace them. And I can't help but think the GT4 and the GT4 RS look so much better than the Cayman. And I've got a small feeling this won't be the only upgrade we'll be doing to this car. Actually, building the front bumper up took longer than I thought. There's loads of grills, trims, carbon, indicators, and the front splitter to go on. But again, this isn't going to be a final fit because all of it has to come all off again for paint, as I've mentioned a hundred times before. So I just want to see what the fitment looks like first and if we have to make any adjustments to the bumper before we make the move on painting it. Now remember the front lower crash bar was bent so we had to replace that but with the kit comes a new lower crash bar and it's actually a smaller one which is needed to fit the new GT4 front bumper. This is looking too good like the front bumper has transformed the car I'm telling you. The indicators are working, the front bumper is on. We do have a few small fitment issues but I'm only sort of testing it out just yet i've not put in the uh little fitment things for here so that's not bolted up to the wing same with this side so like the alignments are all off we was trying to get the bonnet perfectly aligned with the bumper i'm sure we can make that better than that but it is so good look at the carbon on it that is going to look absolutely sick i did buy some side repeaters to go in here i put them in and i threw up <laughs> they were 11 pound side repeaters so i'm gonna have to get some oem ones because the ones that i bought just protruded really far and they just look disgusting so i'm definitely gonna need some oem ones on screen now is a rear end of a gt4 rs and now on screen is a cayman s can anybody tell me the differences big wing big wing correct matthew anything else diffuser diffuser well done anything else exhaust Fantastic, Matthew. <laughs> so, as we've just learned, the GT4 RS has a spoiler, a diffuser, and a different exhaust. Along with the GT4 front bumper I bought, I also bought some GT4 RS rear end parts, including this huge swan neck spoiler. I wasn't 100% sure on how this was going to look, and I'm still not now. But either way, I'm committed to fitting it. We've already drew out the stencil on the boot and then we're going to use some masking tape to stick onto the feet of the spoiler, sharpie some marks where the holes are, where the thread goes through on the bottom, remove the masking tape off the bottom of the feet, stick them onto the boot and then we'll know exactly where we need to drill. And hopefully we should have got it bang on because there's no turning back now. Once we drilled for the top of the boot, we couldn't access it through the underneath so we had to remove a few trims. Then we still couldn't access it, so we had to drill a few more holes in the bottom so we can slide up the bolt through there into the bottom of the spoiler. My oh, man just dropped all the bolts. <laughs> my just dropped all the bolts. Wow. Wow. And yes, I managed to drop a few bolts into the actual boot, which was so annoying and hard to get back out. But once I got them back out, the spoiler was pretty much fitted. We just had to line it all up. Well, that is absolutely gigantic. And yes, it probably does. Well, <laughs> I know what you're gonna be thinking. It looks completely out of place and I kind of agree, but 
Once it's all together, I think it's gonna work. It, a GC4 has the wing, this is all carbon, it's gonna look right. It just looks so dodgy at the minute with the wheels and the sort of positive offset and then it's, it's huge. Trust me, you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. Next up, GT4 carbon diffuser. And as we've seen in our little school lesson, the GT4 has twin pipes left on left left and right so each side and the cayman s has two center pipes so for this we are going to have to get a new exhaust but just to test fit this i think i'm going to take off the exhaust tips for this to work one thing we're also going to have to do is modify where those two parking sensors go they used to fit into the old diffuser but now there's no room to fit it into the new carbon diffuser so perhaps those two parking sensors need to go into the back bumper. Yo! <laughs> yes, that is looking sick. How much better is that looking? It's so much more aggressive and you get to keep the stock bumper as well. <laughs> that, that wing is still still absolutely huge but we do have one more thing but we can't put them on just yet and that are these these are carbon side blades but these unfortunately which is kind of not that cool they uh stick on so because they stick on they're gonna have to be pulled back off again for paint so yeah, I'm not going to stick them on just yet, but you get the sort of gist of it. For now, let's put another wheel on and let's show you the kind of, well, not the end result, the close to end result. Well, it's certainly one of a kind. You're either going to be one of two people with this. You're either going to be able to see the finished product and vision what it's going to look like when it's done, or you think I've just progressively made it worse. <laughs> the wing is looking crazy at the minute. The carbon diffuser is looking mental. And then the GT4 front bumper is definitely finishing this thing off. But one question you're probably all asking right now is how much does it cost up to this stage right now? Let me take you through it. So the pair of side skirts cost me 250 pound. Then the rear quarter glass cost me 99 pounds. And the pot we didn't really need, but I bought anyway, the GT4 body kit. 3,706 pounds. Bringing the total build cost, including the car now, to 28,283 pounds and 33 pence. So, so far, so good with the Porsche. We're definitely moving in the right direction and it's looking a lot better from the moment we picked it up. But I don't know if you guys have noticed throughout the video, I've been wearing the new Porsche design t-shirt that we designed. This is the Cayman S on the front as it was when we collected it with the Porsche design on the back. These are so sick and there's only a limited number available of these and all the revenue made from these all go towards each build. So if you guys want to show your support for the build, you can do by grabbing one of these t-shirts with the link in the description. Thanks so much, all of you for watching this. If you've enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button. If, you, if you've liked it, hit the like button and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.